On January 20th, 1993, in Calgary, Canada, Stephanie McIntosh and her three children had spent the afternoon shopping at a mall. Instead of taking a cab home, she decided they would ride one of the commuter trains. No one was more excited than her four-year-old son, Michael, who, like many boys his age, loved trains. When we got into the C-Train station, I tried phoning home. Rebecca and Taylor were right beside me. But Michael's always kind of running ahead, and he's a handful. <laughs> I guess I was kind of having a rough day, but I kind of got a little upset when I was on the phone. I didn't know he was on the escalator. Eighteen-year-old Nathan Gray was on his way home from work. I walked towards the escalator and there was a, a young child laying at the bottom. I heard a wail like nothing you've ever heard. All of his clothes had been pulled into the bottom of the escalator. I tried to yank him free, but I didn't move him an inch. I was walking across from the phones and I heard Michael When I got down there, his arm was caught in and it was cutting off his circulation. It was cinching his clothes tighter and tighter around him. It was starting to choke him, but I didn't know where the emergency stop buttons are. Shut it off! Somebody shut it off! Once it was off, I tried to pull him some more, but it was just, it was just no use. He was still choking, and this blood and white stuff started coming out of his mouth, and that's when I really started freaking out because I figured he was going to die right there in front of my eyes. The call to the emergency 911 center was transferred to EMS dispatcher Don Papineau. Calgary Paramedic Dispatch. Hello? I'm speaking from Randall LRT Station, the convenience store. Okay, what is the problem there? Yeah, a boy has fallen down, like I can't see properly, but the mother is crying. Is yeah, he okay. conscious and breathing? Yeah. I don't know, I I'm upstairs and the lady is downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When did this happen? I could tell that there was something quite serious going on by all the background noise. But exactly what, I didn't know. Get in the line with me. Medic 22, yeah, respond, bravo. His face had turned a, a very deep, deep purple and blue because of lack of oxygen. I pulled out my pocket knife and tried to cut his jacket free, but the clothes were pulled so tight that I could barely get the knife um, underneath it to cut. My heart was being ripped apart. And then he just went like into a cold stare and I just kept telling him like, Michael, mommy's here. And he was just cold. James Hilson also stopped to help. He wasn't breathing, and I thought maybe he was dead. I wasn't making any headway at all, so I handed the knife over to James. I had heard somebody say they needed someone to talk to the 911 operator. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Um, yes, we're at the Rendell Sea train station. There's a little kid. He got his clothes caught in the escalator at the bottom. He's all wrapped up. We're trying to cut him free, but he's not breathing right now. Okay, he's not breathing. Now, is he conscious? Is he conscious at all, is he? Hello? Not from, not from what we can tell. No? No. I've only been in the dispatch room for three months, but I've been a paramedic for 13 years. It was hard because you want to jump in there and, and do something for the young lad, but you know you can't. I want you 
go down and check on his breathing for me. Okay. We'll do that now and come back to the phone. All right. As soon as I cut the shirt and the waistband of his pants, that's when he started screaming, yelling. It was the most beautiful sound I'd ever heard. I felt almost 100% relief because I figured even if he had brain damage or something like that, like at least he was still alive. But we still couldn't get him loose. Within minutes of the call, the first EMS unit arrived, including paramedic Doug Lewis. Nobody apparently had seen what had happened. My first feeling when I saw Michael was how anybody could get trapped the way he was. He had what they call petechial hemorrhaging, these little blood spots solid all over his, his face, which is an indication of severe suffocation. His right arm was twisted, and we had to cut the sleeve out from underneath the plate because his hand was turning blue, losing circulation in there. Just a mask on your face. Good. Attaboy. Deep breaths. Yeah, and out. A unit from the Calgary Fire Department, led by Captain Ray Ross, arrived with equipment needed to try to free the boy. It looked like part of his body could have been pulled into the escalator toe plates. It was in a great deal of pain. I was able to comfort him and let him know the saying is not going to hurt you anymore. We're going to help you. Okay. We're just about done and these firefighters that are behind you, they're gonna get you free from here, okay? Do you understand that? Yeah. There was so much material and skin underneath the stairs and the, the plates that it made it difficult to unloosen the screws. Okay. 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 Can you see the break? Okay. Can we get you to meet somebody for C5 here? Okay, Doug, you want to come on? Okay. As we were ready to take him off the escalator, we were able to have a really good look at the extent of his injuries. He had a complete fracture of his arm, which was twisted around, and pinching marks on his left arm and down his left side from his shoulders to hips. It's okay, it's okay. We felt that after all that had happened to him, he was a very lucky boy to get away with the injuries that he did. Four-year-old Michael McIntosh was taken to Alberta Children's Hospital, where he was treated for a severely broken arm and examined for possible lung damage from the strangulation. One of the first people to visit him was Nathan Gray. The only image that really I remember is when he was, I guess it was just before he lost consciousness, he was, he was blue in his eyes, just saying, help me. And... Nathan here had Nathan's 18 years old and he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders for doing what he did. I just couldn't express enough thanks to him. If he wouldn't have been there, Michael probably would have died. What I would say to any parent is if you have children and you know escalators are around, certainly be careful with them. Make sure that they don't have any dangling clothes. Take them by the hand and make sure that they understand that it is potential to be very dangerous. You said, stay where your mama is. And daddy. You wouldn't think it happened. He's back to normal. He's a junior evil Knievel. <laughs> He's not afraid to do anything, except he doesn't like to go near an escalator now unless he's holding my hand right beside me. He's not too receptive to me these days. I don't blame him. He remembers the situation every time he, he sees me. But uh, I received a phone call a day or two ago and a little voice in the other end said, thank you for saving my life. And it was just, it was, it was nice to hear.